This video is going to look at the laws of thermodynamics and entropy. So the first law of thermodynamics says that energy contained within the universe is constant. It's transferred from one place to another, but it cannot be created nor destroyed. The second law of thermodynamics is specific to entropy. It says the entropy of the universe is constantly increasing. What that means is that the universe naturally moves towards a greater degree of disorder. Um, we know that the universe is expanding. We have the same amount of energy contained within a volume that continually expands. So the concentration of energy is going to continually decrease. When an exothermic reaction takes place, the energy flows from the system into the surroundings. Once it is in the surroundings, you cannot get it all back. It cannot all be reused. Whenever energy is lost to the surroundings, the entropy of the universe is going to increase. We're going to look at the relationship between all of these processes and entropy um, for this video. So we're going to look at melting, vaporization, reactions where products are in the same phase as the reactants but have more particles, um, making solutions, adding heat, and increasing the volume of gases. So let's start by looking at ice. This is a very simple um, 2D version of ice. Ice is actually a 3D structure that's going to have different geometries depending on um, the pressure that it was under when it was formed. For example, ice from deep in a glacier is going to have a different lattice structure than ice in your freezer because the pressure is going to be different. But what happens is the positive ends of the water molecules are going to line up with the negative um, ends of the other water molecules. The molecules are going to be held in place in the solids. They're not going to be able to translate or move in a line or rotate. They're only going to be able to vibrate. Because of their ability to vibrate, then they are going to have a very small entropy, a very small S value. Molecules are going to be changing their angles in relation to one another in this vibration. So this is going to give the ice an entropy value that's greater than zero. Now let's look at liquid water. It's less structured than ice. You have attractive forces between the dipoles, but they're much weaker, and the molecules are going to have more freedom to move around. They can translate or move in a line, they can rotate, and they can vibrate. So water is much more chaotic than ice. There are literally billions of ways that the molecules could arrange themselves relative to one another. When we look at ice, I'm sorry, water compared to steam, um, water, liquid water, has a relatively low entropy. The forces of attraction between the molecules in the gas phase are going to be very weak, though, under normal conditions. They're going to spread out. They're going to be free to move as they please. So the number of possible arrangements increases by a very, very large degree. So the change in entropy here is much, much larger than zero because liquid water has a relatively low entropy and steam, or water in a gas form is going to have an extremely high entropy value. Now let's look at what happens when the products have more particles. C3H5N3O9, this is nitroglycerin. Um, this is what you see in the cowboy movies where it blows up and it kills a bunch of people, and that's exactly what it's like. You have to be super, super careful with nitroglycerin. Um, now, the fact that it is so explosive is due to the fact, or the reason that it's so explosive is due to the fact that there are four molecules of liquid, a really small volume, are transferred into 29 molecules of gas that's going to rapidly separate because of the heat that's going to be produced. So a small amount of nitroglycerin is going to produce 270,000 atms of pressure in a millionth of a second. So any kind of impact or any kind of heat is going to cause it to explode. So if we look at our reactant and product phases, we see that in this reaction, there are liquid reactants and there are gaseous products. So if a reaction, um, so we have to look at what is being produced. So if you have four gas molecules producing five liquid molecules, the entropy would decrease because the liquid species would have less freedom to move. 
But if a reaction has three moles of gas in the reactant side and four moles of gas on the product side, then your delta S would be greater than zero. There have been lots and lots of nitroglycerin accidents out there. Um, there's a ton of them that we could look at. Um, Alfred Nobel was um, one of the first, well, he's the, he discovered um, TNT. Um, he, he was able to get it into a more stable form to be transported. All right, let's look at our next example. Um, we're going to look here at ions in solution. So usually your delta S is going to be greater than zero when making solutions with solids or liquids. When an ionic compound dissolves in a liquid, the entropy is usually, it will usually increase greatly, giving you a positive value for delta S. The crystal lattice is going to break apart, and the ions are going to experience a huge increase in their freedom of motion, um, allowing them for much more possible arrangements. This is not true, however, for some small ions with large charges, like aluminum with a plus three charge. These ions may attract and reduce movement of larger water molecules, thereby reducing the entropy of water. The entropy of the water may be reduced to the point where the entropy of the overall solution becomes less than that of the components before they were mixed. So the entropy of the ions increases, but the entropy of the water can decrease by a great degree. When we put covalent compounds in solution, um, when you mix those molecular solutes like sugar or ethanol in water, the entropy is going to increase, but to a lesser degree than most ionic compounds. This is because those molecules do not break apart into ions. Now notice here that our change in entropy is less than zero when you make solutions with liquids and gases. So when dissolving a gas in a liquid, the entropy is going to decrease. The rapid and chaotic movements of the gas particles are greatly reduced by the molecules in the solution. This is the main exception to the solutions rule. Gases are going to have high entropy values. When they're dissolved in a liquid, their entropy is greatly reduced, making that delta S negative. The rapid movements of the gas particles are greatly reduced as they dissolve in liquids. Um, notice that the arrows here, those are velocity vectors. Now when you have gas-gas solutions, you dissolve a gas in another gas, the entropy is going to increase due to the random mixing of different molecules. Here we're going to look at the change in entropy being positive when we add heat. At zero Kelvin, the entropy is going to be zero. Everything is lined up in perfect crystals. There is no movement whatsoever. Therefore, there's no randomness. So as the temperature increases from that point, the vibration is going to increase within a solid, which is going to cause an increase in entropy. At the melting point, the temperature does not increase, although the heat continues to be absorbed. The entropy increases greatly at this point, which is called the entropy of fusion. Um, as the molecules or ions gain the freedom to translate or move in a straight line and rotate, thereby greatly increasing the number of ways that they can be arranged. As heat is added to the liquid, these movements become more rapid, and entropy is going to continue to increase. A much greater increase in entropy is going to occur at the boiling point, or the entropy of vaporization. Here the particles acquire total freedom from intermolecular forces in an ideal world, in, in an ideal gas. Their motion and velocity and randomness is going to increase by the largest degree at this point. So if you continue to heat the gas, the particles will move further away from one another as their velocities increase, and that's going to further increase their entropy. This is the Boltzmann distribution um, that we looked at in, the, in Chapter 5. Now from this graph, we can see that the amount of kinetic energy contained by the gas particles within a system is going to broaden as the temperature increases. This is true for liquid and solid systems as well, but the distribution is much greater in a gaseous system. Um, and finally, our entropy is going to, our entropy change is going to be greater than zero when our volume increases. For a gas, entropy is going to increase when there is an increase in volume because the gas particles are able to move within a larger space. Entropy is going to increase here even if the temperature stays the same.